Hi, everyone. Hello, Christian. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So we can get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We are having a borderless engineering session to celebrate 10 years of Hectoberfest. Um, for those who are not familiar, Hectoberfest is an annual celebration promoting the contributions to open source projects. It's a month long festival for code learning and collaboration. I am also checking now that we're going live. Yes, all good. Um, if you're interested to find out more, please go on the website, Hacktober Fairs. There's a few activities you can do. You can go contribute uh, to different open source projects uh, and you can get some really nice digital goodies. Um, at MossLab, we've always been passionate about engaging with the global tech community. We understand and really much appreciate everything that uh, people are sharing online. We use it in our day-to-day -day life. Um, and as a testament to our commitment, we have different initiatives. We have the engineering blog, we have the borderless engineering sessions, which you are joining today. Uh, we're also contributing to open source projects. Uh, one of them, which you will hear, hear more about uh, from Christian. As we go, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. We'll have a Q&A session at the end uh, when Christian is done doing like a quick introduction into this project, hopefully get you curious about this project, maybe you want to uh, make some contributions to it. Uh, so yes, thank you for joining us today, Christian. Uh, Christian is a software developer with over 20 years of experience. He's specializing in interconnectivity. He is based in uh, Berlin. He's currently pioneering in the area of accessible spatial computing. Having worked in diverse industries, he brings a rich and broad perspective to the space. He's passionate about leveraging technology for a positive social impact, and he is a creator of tools. Thank you, Christian, for joining. I will pass it on to you. Please dive us into uh, what you've been building. Yes, let's do it. Thank you. So, um, yeah, can you confirm and the screen is, sh is shared? Yeah. Yes, nice. everything works yeah. well. Thank you very much. So, yes, uh, the, let me introduce about introduce you about, the, the, about this project, this open source project that Roxana Rox mentioned. And yeah, I mean, the project is called Reality Check. Uh, Reality Check um, is a project that started uh, like six months ago. Um, it's already on GitHub. There is uh, this repository with the with the current version, uh, which basically it's is targeted to iOS. More on that later. And basically, it's a um, runtime inspector of Reality Kit hierarchies and expose some options for the debugging sessions to help uh, while developing AR, AR applications on iOS and iPadOS main, right? Um, you, can, you can use it uh, currently. There is uh, some documentation attached, right? But I will comment more on that a bit later. So uh, why uh, we started this project? So the, um, the, really, why? Because uh, basically it, it has been like um, an interesting challenge, especially because uh, when when I started working with uh, with augmented reality, um, I had a, a personally I had a limited understanding of what it really meant Reality Kit and the and the architecture that Reality Kit uses, which is the ECS. So I needed a, a better way to do that. Um, and for that, I created many, many small tools that I could include in the projects that we were working and like a buttons to activate and deactivate. And the thing is like, it was like a lot of manual working and it, it, I could not reuse as much as, as I wanted on, uh, at the time. So I needed a better, like a more canonical uh, tool for solving or seeing these, these issues. And then um, I didn't have a proper pipeline flow to work on augmented reality apps the, i started to find out that there are many many differences on between between platforms and things that i was able to represent on ios i was unable to use them on on, on macOS, especially the lack of ar kit on mac os was super limiting and and yeah it didn't help to to my efforts to kind of like a 
been able to, for example, fire up our playground and been able to do some example of, I don't know, like a scene understanding and then like I go back to iOS and apply it. So I did, I, I did need personally something to, to, to help on that. So how, how you can create a tool that can create, you know, this, this type of communication. So the first approach and, and, and it's basically, um, taking um or assuming that you're running an, an ios app on your iphone ipad os i created some some components for swift ui that help it to communicate and send data to a macos running app you no know, host client relation so basically that is that is done through multiper like a bonjour so basically the device is going to once you add the swift the swift ui component to your hierarchy is going to start broadcasting and the macOS app is going to recognize it, invite it and connect. And that is going to help us to or allow us to send data back and forth, uh, which helps to kind of inspect and get the hierarchy of the information from the iOS side or send commands and actions back to the, to the client app, to your running uh, AR application on your iPhone, for example. Also in this process, um, I, I, I wanted uh, some more um, context, right? Like uh, what you are seeing on your AR app, maybe it's helpful you know, for somebody like it's working with you, for example, if you are working and being able to do that, it uh, was like a uh, really straightforward <laughs> thanks to replay kit. Uh, and I was surprised you know, how, how well it works and how fast you can stream real time. So basically, what we did is a, is a Marcos app that is able to display a replay kit and a stream on real time and communicate both ways you know, with multi pair for, for the hosting, for the client hosting app. So this uh, on, in, on context is basically like this. So let me play. There is no sound, but this is the version that you can download right now on, on, on 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 development on the repository um the 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 scene that you see on the on the middle of the interface is basically a connected live streaming uh iphone in this case and all these parts like this button etc is part of the component that you add on your hierarchy and the app itself that you are looking at is reality check is basically on the left some options to debug your view, the hierarchy itself of the of, of reality kit, uh, some information about the hierarchy. And then when you select something, uh, you can see uh, more properties, components, etc. And in this case, for this demo, uh, you also can see which of the entities you had selected, which also was something really interesting to me. To know, right? There's like a, there are many, many issues when you work with the AR related to what I'm selecting, what is the parent, uh, what is the transform of this, right? And you know, all all these other questions are really important when you do like a like a three D match, you know, like algebra is like a really important the transforms. You know? And then uh, there were rumors, right? But Vision has to <laughs> drop, you know, and was like um, uh, really exciting because 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 it it works and we knew from the day one that it was based on on reality kit um but the thing is um i was not sure no like uh, even if it's uh, uh, based on the same rendering engine it's going to have uh, the way of using replay kit it's going to work on you at the same time it's going to have the same hierarchy uh, many questions right uh, arise when 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 this when this went out so the first Mm, challenge, no problem, is that the API changed completely, right? We have now as a proper CFUI API. If you go and download the iOS version, you're going to see that there is some solutions for, for wrapping the AR view to some hosting controllers to be able to, con to integrate it on, on SwiftUI and some affordances on that. But Vision S is completely different beast. And then that means that the way of inspecting it itself, the AR view, is completely different. In fact, AR view doesn't exist on, on Vision OS. So it was like, okay, now how? How how we, we inspect this? On top of that, 
um, there are much more um, privacy concerns on, 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 on Vision OS. Um, data that we took by granted on, on iOS, like uh, are the anchors or the type of scene understanding or segmentation of, of people or access to some levels of metal are not allowed, at least on this version. And we cannot see some parts of it and you don't know why you don't see them. So for example, some anchors, you cannot access them. Uh, and, and again, some uh, AR kit specific features you need to be on immersive, etc. So a whole set of different restrictions and, and logic on, on vision. And on top of that, uh, I love this quote. Uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, a lot of problems with types that were existed or properties that existed for certain platforms, but didn't exist for others, right? Which really complicated now the, the way of transmitting uh, the data from the client to the host because right now you have the situation that even if you have a transform component or an anchor component it doesn't necessarily means the same if it comes from different platforms so it needed another approach you know for 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 making making this work uh, correctly and keep the backwards compatibility with ios so yeah, the famous platform agnostic approach is really interesting. Uh, but um, but the thing is, like um, at this point, I, I realize you now that all this work that we have been doing for extracting the the iOS part of the of the information, you know, how we know which entities, what what properties are some component, it was mainly done by hand, like going through the headers of the SDK and extracting it, which is really. Uh, not sustainable, error prone. Uh, we know that, but I didn't know better. Uh, but luckily, I, I found this uh, this 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 command on the Swift compiler, which allows you to point to an SDK, and is able to output a huge JSON, if you want, a JSON uh, of all the symbols and all the information related to that SDK. In this case. It was really, really valuable because right now, now I, I have access to all the public information, properties, description, components of everything. And now this can be then, because it's a command line, uh, can be automated, right? So in any update, because also we have these different betas going on every month, right? Or so. Uh, so yeah, we now have this huge amount of like a proper, structured, and precise data, more reliable too. Uh, but now we need it. To convert that data to to again not to some type that we could transport to in this case to Mac OS right which is the host now you have imagine the situation you have this JSON uh, of like a specific types that only exist on Vision OS and you need them to transport them. so um, I'm a huge fan of DocC if you go to the um, to the repository itself and you go to the documentation. The documentation itself is 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 written on Doxy, um, and in general, I, I do like the way it's constructed this technology. And Doxy, which is the documentation technology that Apple um, um, produced or created, uh, basically was doing or is doing what we needed in this point, which is basically take from a, a step of the compilation all the data, all this dump of types, and being able to parse them and represent them, which is basically what we want to do with the reality check. So I was lucky enough to, to find this uh, this part of the of the DOCSI project, which is called Symbol Kit, which is basically what is, uh, what is able to represent with types um, what you have from the dump of a JSON. So from the symbol graph file, which is the output of the previous command, right? The, the symbol graph, you can now create Swift types and, and, and work and, yeah, and filter and do operations with them. Like for example, in this case, you can, maybe you cannot see it, but you can ask, I want all the types that conform to this specific protocol, which is helpful for filtering the components, for example. But of course, and the amount of data on at this point is huge, you know, for 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 being able and huge. I mean, uh, one hundred thousand lines of JSON, two hundred megabytes of files, right? And and again, think that we need to transport this like almost 
in real time if you want to keep updates on on the screen so we need to create this callable version plus filtering and doing some steps that again i i did not want to I didn't want i i did want to reduce the amount of manu manual work on on this so again there's some uh, code generation which could be could be uh, yeah, could be upgraded on different technologies but in this case it's using a small piece of python that apple created too which is called uh, gif which means generate your boilerplate and allows to create templates so I can now extract from the previous two steps. So extracting the JSON, converting in types, and now generating, uh, in this case, the callable representation, uh, it, it can be done almost uh, automatically. This uh, generated um, three different libraries that now are responsible for this, for this part of the work, which were not existent on the previous version of, of, of Reality Check. And the first one is the um, sorry, and the first one is the related to the structure, uh, like a, taking an SDK and and and, and not putting a symbol graph. And the second one is the code generation for callable, and and there is a third one that is related to um, introspection itself. Right, we have now a, a a different way to also display the hierarchy and the data, which is uh, also like a more closer to the source, no interpretation of the data. Uh, and that used the uh, 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 custom dump from point three. And it's a third library, which is now part of the three libraries that are main dependencies of, of, of reality check. So now all this is basically the work has been done for taking Vision OS uh, to reality check and being able to, to, to automate the process and make it more future friendly. And, and this is the work that happened. How it works, and this is not going to be. This is this is bad. So, the new version of um, Reality Check uh, it looks like this. Um, and you know what you are going to have after install. Uh, we can talk about that later if you are interested. How to install in your existing app. Uh, your app, as soon as you install the components, is going to start broadcasting uh, uh, on Bonjour. And it's going to appear on this on this uh, popover, so you can connect. With it. As I don't have a, a Vision Pro here, uh, we can we can use a simulator. Let me make it bigger. And in the case of the simulator, uh, I already have an app that is installed, which is basically the the full template one. And with a uh, reality check included to show, you know, that what is this, the small amount of steps for for being able to connect. And then, uh, as soon appears, right, you're going to have the the application. I can I can show a bit. Uh, I think yeah, I can go and and basically it's like a it's as soon the app appears, it's going to broadcast and it's going to be catched by them and by them by the host in this case in this case and once you have it here uh, you only press connect and it's able to send all the hierarchy and everything and inspector and everything works correctly right now you can see that the interface is a bit cluttered um, and this is something like a, also uh, uh, it's a different workflow from what it happened with with ios which you usually cannot work on the simulator because uh, there are key limitations and also, it's much more limited compared to the Vision Simulator. So, what you do usually on 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 iOS is working on the real device and then transmit. But on the case of Vision S, at least until now, uh, you, we are going to need probably work on, on on the simulator a lot. So, this screen, if you connect to the real device, is going to do replay kit. And it's going to show the screens and the volume with some privacy uh, limitations, but uh, I can tell you it works uh, in the real device. Uh, but in the case that you're working, which is probably what is going to happen uh, in the close future, um, with a simulator, I uh, created like a, a different view so we can be more comfortable uh, doing what we are doing. And this is going to contain, for example, the console, which is the, the one uh, responsible for displaying the dump I mentioned before. 
Uh, this is basically how it looks and how it's how it works and and what it outputs currently uh, from from your from your hack is basically you can see that it's a complete different setup of uh, of entities and there are some interesting decisions you can see when you select them what well, you can follow in the bottom of the console and you can see that everything is is like a check it on real time and 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 some interesting data is there uh, and for in this example like there is this model sphere and basically that's it right right now it, there is some information that is still not displayed but you can see the contrast you now like for example a model entity has this amount of components right uh, while this CAA layer entity um, it only has the synchronization, which looks like it's transversal for all the entities now on the hierarchy. Plus, there is this type of entities which are really interesting, which is basically proves that um, every window has its own context, which makes like a no matter where you put the the models or the relative views, you can inspect all of them and and relate between them, which is really interesting for doing projects. Um, and you can get information like uh, what is the idea of it, so you can now climb the tree of it, or you can go and jump and see what are the parents. In this case, I'm, I'm pressing this button, which is going to climb the tree to the pattern of it, so you can go and hide. And the point of this interpretation on this panel is being able to send uh, commands, which is still not there in this version, but basically it's going to allow you to, to, to deactivate, activate, and, and do some certain stuff. Which is also interesting for knowing what is happening with your hierarchy and 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 what is going on on your app itself. And I think that's it. That's pretty much the demo. And thank you very much. We can talk more about that if you're interested later. Thank you, Christian. Um, I think it would be nice to just have a little. Uh, a look over the GitHub repository, like what's happening in there now. I know you mentioned mentioned the documentation, but maybe just to do yes. a quick overview. Yes, yes. So um, let me go back to um, to write the check. Uh, basically, um, what is on on the main release? Uh, it's the version for iOS that uh, that you can work right now. You can download, you can connect to the iOS app, and and this is pretty stable, although much more limited and less automated than the than the previous, than the than the current version that is on the uh, Vision OS branch. Which if you want to experiment, it's already available there. All these uh, instruction steps and, and and all the comments that I, I, I did, all the steps are already there, up to date. And documentation is not updated yet for the Vision OS branch. But if you want to use it for for iOS, um, yeah, first also like a please thanks to to yeah, I I, I said at the beginning. that I had a, a limited understanding of Reality Kit and ECS and and and, and please. Thanks to these people that they were really, really generous and really helped me to understand what was going on with the Reality Kit. So yeah. Anyways, so when you when you want to integrate this, there is this link for documentation, and in the documentation is basically a step by step. Uh, you can download the project, which contains some examples. Let me show now, and it's a step by step of what you have to do. It's like a. It's, I try to make it the more economic possible. Which is basically to import the um, the, the library itself, the, the Swift Package Manager module. You need to add some permissions for what you for allowing this multi pair connectivity and transmission of data, and this is added on the info list. And then, in the case of um, of iOS, there was this a specific component which was this this hosting controller of the AR view, uh, which allowed to 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 send the data. And that's it. You have now the preview, and it's going to it's going to work on the preview. It's going to work on the on the on the macOS app itself. Yeah. Do you want me to show uh, Roxana the the project? There is something interesting there that maybe. Yeah, sure. Can I? Yeah. 
So if you download the repository, uh, this is the, the vision OS version, but it's but it, the structure is similar on the iOS. Um, you're going to see the, the dependencies, which are also added to the workspace to be able to edit it on, on, on real time. So you don't have to push every time and make these local dependencies. But what I try to show uh, on this workspace is some examples of how you can use uh, or how you can connect the um, reality check to different types of app. So you have four projects uh, with different complexities and different realities. For example, even something that is running on, on a storyboard, a joy kit. And then you have the basic uh, setup uh, for iOS and you have an equivalent for the basic setup on Vision OS, which is again, is the template project plus uh, what is it required to connect to reality check, which is basically this one jewel and the package itself right which is not added here because it's local and then the some some small really really i promise really really small code that you use for adding the um, the component to your hierarchy which is basically something to keep the logic and the and the, and, and the flow itself of, of propagation of data and whenever you have um uh, something that you want to expect, you have a, a simple modifier that you add. And in this case, it's a model 3D, which comes with a default template. And you add this modifier, and that is going to create this flow that you can see here. It's going to uh, show open, and it's going to, as soon as you open the app, it's going to broadcast, you're going to be able to connect. And when you're connected, you have all the hierarchy. That's it, also. Very technical, but at the same time, I, I try to make it simple. And maybe it will be nice to understand what do you see, like what's the roadmap for this? What's next? What is what would be some potential contributions that the community could jump in? Yes. So uh, while working on, on Vision S, uh, as I mentioned, the um, yeah the project needed to to grow up, right? They needed to to improve the automation, the structure. A structure itself, right? So being more reliable and up to date with the type of data. So there is some work to do on the automation part. I, I really want to, to investigate options on the SPM plugins, maybe how to make the structure better. There are some exceptions that it has to be taken in consideration. So basically, like extending the data that it has to be described. And yeah, I have uh, many, many ideas that um, that we discussed with Roxana previously that we are going to add it as a probably as a GitHub project. So we can track like a, literally as a feature request or something that is internal. For me right now, there are things like a, like a ergonomics, like a really important, like I've been able to, uh, I didn't know, but the dynamic font size on Mac is different. So I would like to make this better on, on accessibility wise. So for example, if you go and change the contrast is really low key. So there are some 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 parts of the of the design that it should be made more accessible. And it's and in fact, no, this is uh, right now uh, an accessibility uh, inspector to accessibility component is really uh, is really full fledged on, on Vision OS. So it's really interesting taking this opportunity. But we can we could leverage on uh, on that part, right? Like making the inspector itself more powerful too, right? Like being able to send the commands back. Uh, there are the options to make some diffs. Uh, while I've been working on this, sometimes it's really useful to see while this is updating, uh, being able to see what are the changes on, for example, the matrix of it, or what's the translation or the part of the translation part of the matrix, and and it would be nice, for example, to connect with. Kaleidoscope, so plenty of ideas there that I would like to public on on a GitHub project, and and I think there is going to be like a a whole range of them, which goes from like a really technical deep, like going to the to the source of the SDK to some GUI. So there are also like a many many different type of complexity, which I think it's is going to be welcome to anybody that that wants to help and, and make this uh, this better. Awesome. And I think it would be nice. Uh, you were talking about potentially making a GitHub project, uh, maybe put in some labels in there, like beginner friendly or like some sort of uh, categories yep. for people to 
to make it a little bit bit less intimidating because even for me this this is a bit intimidating but it would, I would love to work on something like this. Fair, fair enough, right? This is like a, it looks like a Magos app with some weird technology and interconnectivity, etc. So, and yeah, and some compiler and 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 I have to say, right? It's like a in combination. It it looks like intimidating, as you mentioned, uh, uh, and as I see it, it looks like a, a maybe too complex, right? And maybe that's something to work on, like a too pro. And maybe it should be like a more approachable. That that could be some some feedback. But uh, I, I, I try my best to to cut it in pieces, right? So if you want to work on the interface, you don't really need to know about the multi pair or the streaming or the compilation, right? So I try to to make it like a really isolated and 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 and, and encapsulated, so so we can work on it. So uh, and also I'm really really open to to talk about this and help and and, and grow, right? I'm really invested. I use this project. I use it on the labs, right? And, and I think it has all the potential, uh, especially now that the debugging tools are scattered around the ecosystem. There are some tools on Reality Composer. There are some tools on Xcode. There are some tools that are not anymore on the runtime, like the debugging tools, which already I feel a feedback to Apple. Um, so I think there is this space now for creating this type of tools, like a, knowing what's going on. If you open this, it's like a really great simulator. But you don't really know how this really works and what you have to move or, or if you have a, 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 a bug, right? You you don't know. For example, now I'm chasing why Model 3D is not accessible all the time. And this helps me to really go and investigate if I add the component, the component is here, but why it's still not the sponsored property on entities, no? So I think it's useful. And 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 yeah, and, and again, it's, it's simpler than, than maybe what I'm expecting now. And I remember when I was working on um, AR projects, I was learning the most when I was debugging stuff, when stuff was not working. I was like going in there, trying to inspect stuff, trying to figure out what is, why is that looking bad or anything? So I imagine a project kind of like if you want to get specialized in AR, iOS AR, like Vision OS and all this, I think this is such a good project to, in a way, force you to learn about stuff. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, um, let me let me. I, I was uh, I, I was looking at the. Um, let me find the window, the proper window. I think I closed it even. So yeah, let me share later. There's a document that, that from Apple itself, you not know, like a, explaining the the relevance of knowing uh, data or, or, on runtime, right? And and this is a document about the, how the debugger works on the preview uh, or the simulator which also are different between them, right? Uh, and I think the philosophy is right, but I think the tools are not there yet, right? Uh, what we do when we don't have tools, we create our own, right? And and we can do it, which, which is like a, yeah, also great that we can do this, right? And I know you're, you would be more than happy, right, to assist anybody who would want to dive in and contribute, maybe just share, like, how could people reach out to you? Is it on Twitter yes, I mean, or? Uh, so we put it on. I think it's on YouTube and file in, in general. Like um, I mean, all the um, I mean all the the social networks. But it's difficult these days, right? I suppose like for everybody. But you can find me with this handle, like uh, this El Cranio thingy. Uh, I'm on Mastodon. I'm on. I'm still on Twitter I'm, because yeah, people is there. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, please. Uh, on the GitHub repository itself, right? If you find for related check. Uh, you're going to have my my email, and you can submit a PR. Uh, uh, so basically, I'm I'm really easy to find. But if you want to make it like completely directed to the project, uh, go to the repository. Um, we have to work still on the on the on the rules of the of, of how we we handle the conduct norms, etc. Uh, but it's yeah, pretty much like a submit a PR, submit a question. There is nothing like a, that is that we are going to find. Or I'm going to find, so I'm, it's going to be really welcome. No, <laughs> any 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 comment, any contribution, any idea, right? So so yeah. So, yeah. Also, there's so much potential. Yeah. I really want to yeah, explain now. And maybe something to to wrap up if we don't have any questions yes. at the moment from uh, the public. But I don't know. I just want. I'm curious. You know, Vision App, like the Vision Pro Labs. Like, how was it taking this tool there? 
I know we can't share too much, but yeah. you can share. So uh, I, I forgot to put a, an interrogation mark on uh, on this slide. Uh, I think I have the slide here uh, when when appear right uh, when when this appeared in front of me. I was like a interrogation mark, right? Is this going to work at all, right? And 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 I was really uh, concerned, right? Uh, so um, the thing is, uh, it works. It works really well. I was like a really surprised about how well it works. Uh, basically, yeah. If you, in retrospective, it makes sense because it's a huge computer, the Vision Pro itself. Uh, but how? Yeah, again, I cannot comment much. But everything worked as I expected on on the terms of communication. Uh, replay kit was there, but there are some privacy concerns that limits the visualization on the on the environment. I cannot say much on that, but that limits a bit the preview. Um, and potentially there are alternatives, which also I cannot comment, uh, which could be coming on, on, on future releases. But uh, the idea is being able to, from outside the Vision Pro, being able to see what you are looking on and at the same time inspecting it. And who knows, right? Uh, as I said, Vision Pro itself is a computer, right? So maybe there is a, a, a timeline where you have reality check inside the Vision Pro and you don't need a Mac, or the Vision Pro can help to debug iOS apps, right? Or the other way around, or make all this kind of mix match between devices. But yeah, I can see a world where this inspector and this hierarchy can be something that joins you inside your space. All right. Uh, we actually have a question from mm -hmm. Meli. Um, when do you think we will be able to simulate hand gestures on simulator? Can we develop tools for it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a good question, right? 14 hours ago, Apple released a new sample project for Vision OS, uh, explaining how to make a scene understanding and AR kit uh, possible, right? And which is this sample project like you pinch and drop a cube and then you move the hand and, and, and it throws away the, the cubes. And the thing is, it doesn't work on the simulator, right? Uh, it's a great project, it's really simple, the, the sample is great. But the thing is, like, um, as I mentioned before, ARKit is not on Mac OS. And I think, in some sense, it seems to affect the, the, the simulator capabilities. And the simulator doesn't have uh, uh, AR kit, and hand recognition is part of the AR kit. It's, it's really a privacy level and uh, of kind of computer vision algorithms for understanding this type. And the skeleton of hands is not available on on the simulator, and it's not going to be until we have AR kit. So not much we can do uh, on that. I'm I'm really uh, dying for having AR kit on the simulator, and and in that front. I totally recommend you, and I transmit the same message. You know that 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 the engineers transmitted to me is like a send feedbacks to to Apple, right? It's like it's really, uh, really, really necessary to um, to say what we need and what we don't need. So please go and say something like, "Yeah, I want a kit because this will be like a, help me to develop some certain apps." And they are really, really open to to these suggestions. Uh, so this is the path that we are following. We are please asking Apple, open AR kit more, uh, especially because we need to work so much you know, on on the simulator. And there are many use cases for sure that requires a scene understanding, hand recognition, a skeleton, uh, even body tracking, which is not on Vision OS, but potentially could be. Uh, it's something like a please if you need it for your use case, make a request. If you have problems submitting requests, contact me. I help you. But this is the time that we need to kind of like direct the platform so the tools grow in the way that we need. Awesome. I hope that uh, answered your question. Um, anything else? If uh, anybody has any more questions, now would be the time to do so. Um, if not, feel free to reach out to Christian. Um, He's, uh, he's more than happy to continue the conversations outside of this uh, chat. We'll have this session available on uh, YouTube to be able to rewatch it. 
so if you want to dive into this project, you can just go again uh, through the presentation, um, get some more details again, refresh on that. Um, okay, thank you so much, Christian. All I can do is also like wish you a good luck in your uh, world tour around uh, Vision Pro Labs. I don't know you've been to two yet, like already. So, how many more to go? But I, I'm sure you want to go to all of them, right? No, for sure. Now with the AR kit sample, especially, <laughs> I commented already. But uh, but thank you for the opportunity and 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 please don't be shy on commenting right um uh, uh, yeah as, as we said before right this like this looks much more intimidated than we than it really is and even that feedback is useful you no know? like uh, we we need to make this approachable so so we can create better experiences right so please yeah and if, if not as a contributor maybe somebody who actually uses this tool so i think that will that kind of feedback will also be incredible to see Definitely. okay Yep. Thank you so much. Uh, happy Hacktoberfest and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.